Sorry for starting off so close to the camera, but this first part is just for Sarah. Sarah, do you see this bruising right under my chin? This is the only bruising that I got from the bone graft procedure. And I actually harvested my bone somewhere around here and then it bruised just a little lower. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. This is, well, this is the weekly running and training vlog where the main purpose is for you to tell me about your week of running. I wanna hear about your successes and I definitely wanna hear about your setbacks. But first, first we're gonna talk about an article that I found in Canadian Running Magazine. Now this article was also published all over the internet. So you may find the exact same thing somewhere else, but I'm gonna to link to the Canadian Running article in the show notes below. And the article is titled, The 10 Commandments of Good Nutrition for Runners. Now guys, I know talking about diet, it's very individual. We all do do things just slightly differently. But when I saw this 10 commandments of good nutrition for runners, I thought that's something good to talk about. And while I may or may not agree with each and every one of the 10 commandments, it's a good jumping off point. And just like the original 10 commandments, you might look at some of these and think they probably should have put a little more thought into them and gone a little deeper. It just goes to show that since the original 10 commandments, we haven't changed. People love lists. So I want you to take this list with a pinch of salt as we go through listing the commandments. And the first one is to snack frequently. Okay, now you Know what the first one is this is what i want you to do think about your comment we're going to go through and i want you to comment on one or two or three or all of them if you like and tell me what you do in each instance and the article says that snacking frequently will keep your blood sugar nice and level and it'll stop you from feeling sluggish on your runs then it goes into a little more detail saying that the snack should be a good blend of protein and carbohydrates well here's the thing I don't snack at all. And this was actually the main reason that I wanted to talk to you guys about this because I saw the first commandment and I realized that I've already broken it. I'm just not a snacker. I eat my meals and then I don't eat in between them. And I guess I really want to hear about your eating habits when it comes to snacking. And if you do snack, what do you have? So even though I started off pretty poorly with not adhering to the first commandment, the second one is one I can really get behind. And the second commandment of good nutrition for runners is don't hold the carbs. And that's a good thing because I really like carbs and I eat a lot of them. Now I know this can be quite divisive. The Atkins diet still lives on for a lot of people. Of course, there are a slew of other diets out there that say they don't want you eating carbs. But I'm gonna read this next part right from the article because it says, the majority of studies have come to the conclusion that for most runners, skimping on carbs at any point in your training training cycle provides little, if any, benefit. So guys, eat the carbs if you want, don't eat them if you don't want to. I'm really not one to talk about breaking commandments. I break the first one all the time. The third commandment for good nutrition for runners is to drink water. Right now you are shaking your head. You can't believe the compelling information that I am bringing you, but yup, you gotta drink water guys. And I think that's all I'm gonna say about that. Well, no, hold on. I want to talk about your pee. Your pee needs to be a light yellow. And with that, we move on to the fourth. The fourth commandment for good nutrition for runners is to time your nutrition. Now, this is it's getting pretty complicated right now. We've got to time our meals around our runs. And the article points out that eating too much or eating the wrong thing before a run can leave you with cramps, can leave you with GI problems. And then it says if you eat too little, your tummy could be growling at you mid-run. So don't eat too much, don't eat too little. You've got to time it right and then your run will go perfect. Easy, right? And then it gives you a recommendation that you should have a meal three to four hours before your run that has a good blend of fat, carbohydrates, and protein. This is some ideal world that these authors are living in. So I hate to say it, but yeah, I, I, I don't time my nutrition. So that is the second commandment that I am breaking on a daily basis. My runs generally get squeezed in to the point that has been appointed to the run time. That has no bearing on what I eat or when I eat. Now, one caveat to that is on race day, but as I only race a couple times a year, I can't really call that normal. So this is another one that I'd be really interested to hear from you. Do you time your nutrition? Do your runs take that prominent a place in your entire life that you can actually schedule your meals around that one run? Let me know. I'd like to hear about it. All right, guys, we're getting through it quickly, and we're getting through it quickly because it's really not that important, especially for me, because the fifth commandment for good nutrition for runners is another one that I really don't pay attention to, and that is to eat for recovery. And the article points out that you should be having something to recover, something to build your muscles back after every run that has a ratio of four to one carbohydrates to protein. Again, there's a little too much thinking going on. First, I have to plan my meals before, then I have to have this four to one ratio already set up for after my run. Now, I know, I probably should eat for recovery. It may even make me feel better throughout the day. But the thing is, I don't feel bad throughout the day. And I wonder if there's a difference between levels of training. So what I mean is perhaps a new runner might expend more calories, so they might need something immediately after they run. Whereas a runner that is training for something, a runner that has been running for a little while, perhaps they only need some kind of recovery meal after they do hard workouts. Now, generally speaking for me, I only eat right after my runs. Actually, now I'm thinking about it. I never eat right after my runs. It's always a couple hours after I get home, after I get showered, except on race day. As I've already pointed out, 
I only race a couple times a year, but on those days, I rarely try to eat immediately after I finish running because I know how important it is. It was important enough to be a commandment. The sixth commandment for good nutrition for runners is to only supplement when absolutely necessary. And I gotta say, I, I probably agree with this. I'm kind of a whole foods guy. I kind of like eating my nutrients rather than taking them in pill form. With that said, I am plant-based, so I do take a B12 and I take some calcium supplements too. But I would argue that those are necessary. So with that, the good news is, is that I am abiding by commandment number six. Number seven, now number seven is a good one. Number seven is to make room for treats. And guys, this is a commandment. It's, this article is commanding you to make room for treats. And I can tell you that this is one that I abide by. I do make room for treats. Now it's very easy for runners to become obsessive over what they eat. But guys, I don't know if you've heard, obsession generally isn't healthy. Moderation in all things, my friends. And eating is pleasurable and perfection is not the goal. You just want to do better. So if you do want a slice of pizza once in a while, if you want to have that beer, totally fine. For those of you wondering, I, I eat chocolate every single day. I usually fill a little egg cup with chocolate chips and I eat those after my dinner. And then I find that I'm not craving sweets at all any time. Now the cynics out there are going to say, well, Matt, you're not craving sweets because you eat sweets every day. And to you, I say, fair play, my friend. Now come on, number eight is to mind your alcohol consumption. And yes, I abide by this. Generally speaking, because I'm not a fan of drinking my calories. I'm not really a smoothie kind of guy and I don't drink very often. With that said, cast your mind back about 30 seconds ago. The previous commandment was to make room for treats. So occasionally I will treat myself with a martini a couple of times a week. So in that way, I'm kind of melding the two commandments. I am making room for treats and I am minding my alcohol consumption. Commandment number nine is to watch your fiber intake. And I gotta say, this is another one that I, I don't really pay attention to. This is a commandment that I blatantly ignore. And here's why. So I guess it's very easy if you are eating a lot of carbs to also eat a lot of fiber. And for some of us that can give you an upset tummy, perhaps it's gonna leave you running to the loo mid run. But I tell you this, your body can get used to it. So generally speaking, I eat beans for every meal. As you, as you know, I'm plant-based, so I don't eat meat. So I kind of replace meat that I would eat if I was a carnivore with beans. So I get a lot of fiber. And to be honest, I don't pay any attention to it. I think I eat a lot, but it could be a normal amount. Either way, I am not watching my fiber overload, which is the actual commandment number nine. And then finally, we have commandment number 10, which is sleep. And I'm gonna brush right over this because I don't know how sleep found its way onto a nutritional guide for runners. But if you haven't already heard, Sleep is pretty good for you. Get more of it. That one was for you, Kelly. All right, guys, I had a pretty good week of running. Yeah, I really did have a good week of running. We've got beautiful weather here in Florida. It is winter time. It is the time of year that I look forward to all year. It hasn't been too cold, but it hasn't been too warm. We are right in that Goldilocks zone. And I started off this week with 7.58 miles. Very easy. I do like getting my week started off with an easy run. And then I followed it up with 8.1 miles on Tuesday. But on Tuesday, as you know by now, if you've been watching any of these weekly running and training vlogs, Tuesday, because I'm following the Hanson's Marathon method, is interval day. And this week I knocked out six 800 meter intervals with two minutes recovery in between. Felt pretty good. It was a good workout. I was really happy with myself. Now Wednesday is a suggested day off on the Hanson's Marathon program, but I did 10.2 miles very easy. And the reason I did it was because it worked better with my work schedule. I'm going to move that day off to Friday. And guys, I guess there's a good lesson in that. We gotta be adaptable. We gotta move things around when they don't fit. Thursday was a solid day. I knocked out a total of 11.1 miles, but it started off with two miles to warm up, eight miles at tempo, and then I cooled down with 1.1 miles. And this was a great lesson in the ups and downs of running, because when I started running at that tempo pace, things were a bit sketchy. I was wondering how I was gonna continue for so long running at that pace. And then when I got to about the middle point, I was actually feeling pretty good and it, it felt doable. Felt like I was gonna be able to hold on. And then of course, by the time I got to the end of the run, by the time it was like mile and a half, mile to the finish, started feeling that fatigue, started anticipating running slow again and running easy. So it was a great reminder of that old ultra running adage, it never always gets worse. So when you're feeling bad, it's gonna get better, guys. Friday, of course, as you already know, Friday was a day off, just spent a little time on the peloton, but no running, just taking it easy. Saturday, I went up for 7.6 miles, super easy, except I did throw in eight 30 second strides with 30 seconds recovery in between, and that left me feeling really good. Usually when I just run easy and I come back after running slow, I can still feel a bit sluggish, but when I throw in those strides, it leaves me feeling good for the rest of the day. And then I wrapped up the week on Sunday with 7.7 .7 miles. Now, Sunday was a bit chilly. It was raining when I went out for the run, but it was the only time I could go, so I had to run in the rain. 7.7 .7 miles, I ran over to the mall, and I ran up that small incline that I like to do at least once every couple weeks. Now, when I say it was cold, I didn't actually have to wear a shirt. I didn't wear a shirt because it was raining, so I know some of you are thinking to yourself, Matt, Listen, if you don't have to wear a shirt, it's not really cold. And you're probably right. Don't forget to let me know about your week of running and thanks for staying all the way to the end of the video. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.